Hi, I'm Chris Clark, Artistic Director of Cinema St. Louis. We're the presenters of the 20th Annual Whitaker St. Louis Filmmaker Showcase. I'm here this morning. Well, you don't know what time it is, but I do. It's morning. I'm here with Ben Manhanke and his intriguing, almost indescribable, but we're going to talk about it anyway, uh, film Peeping Tom, which we discussed uh, before. Um, in other years, in other programming, it could have equally worked in a, like a thriller or slasher or horror program, but this is in a program that's more experimentalish in nature and it straddles those lines for so many reasons. Um, this mostly silent, creepy, beautiful, weird, dark, you know, I could go on and on, um, Ben, but you know, um, so this story about a, you know, a, a <clears throat> stalker and probable killer and a creepy person. So this, story came from you, you must tell the the tale of you know what what was the seed of this the kernel of this idea i think it's fascinating sure yes yeah so uh i guess interestingly it was from uh the catalyst was sort of a photo i'd seen on the internet and it was uh, like world war ii era i believe and it was a young woman and uh the photo had been uh, a heart had been cut out of the photo where the woman's uh, head was um and this was, uh, I believe, her fiance or, or boyfriend or, or sweetheart in general, who was uh, serving the military, had cut out her face in the shape of a heart to put in a locket to, to carry overseas with him. Um, but the photo was of sort of the scraps that were left over. Um, and it was just such an interesting, I guess, duality to that image, because on, on the one hand, I could see it how it's such a, like a loving act to want to take that photo of your loved one with you overseas. But on the other hand, just looking at what's left over, um, sort of bizarre, creepy image of basically like a headless woman. And then this idea of, you know, he's, you've kind of ruined the photo um, in order to basically have the image just for yourself and to lock that image away um, so that only you can see it. So that kind of possessiveness. So that kind of duality is, is, was the kernel, I guess, that I was trying to strike at here with Peeping Tom looking at these, these sort of loving acts or, or acts of, of uh, compassion that are, you know, depending on your perspective. Um, can be seen either way, where the Peeping Tom certainly uh, in the film uh, believes that what he's doing, these sort of art projects he's, he's creating are uh, a reflection of his compassion or his uh, interest in these women, but are also from the other perspective of these women, very creepy and disturbing sort of uh, totems. So that was, that was the catalyst. We see, you know, <clears throat> somewhat similar things. We've, you know, in different horror films, we've seen the, the creepy room that the, uh, disturbed individual, male or female, has, you know, a wall of pictures of their nemesis or rival or, you know, boyfriend with the eyes scratched out and things. So yes. it's kind of similar to that, but, but you looked at the screen, you, know, you didn't look at the picture in the story, you looked at the scraps and, you know, and, and, and built backwards out, you know, this story. But this doesn't scratch the surface, really, of what we've seen. Um, most people will have already seen this, hopefully by the time, you know, they see us talking, but you know, you say in your cover letter and, and description that you were uh, inspired by the films of Dario Argento and the the color palette and the cinematography. So just just talking about a, we're talking about a slasher and a serial killer that people you know think a certain thing and lots of blood and goo and stuff. Well, there's a lot of red, but that's the you know the color palette, and the cinematography, and the yeah. dark shadows, and you know there is a lot of craft that went into this film. Hence my reason to you know to put it into this particular program because you know it there isn't much speech and if any really and there's just a lot of um <clears throat> or not much but the, the, you know it's the colors and the shadows and the dark you know or as much a character um as anything so you know how long did it take you to develop this you know system or, or you know list of you know how you wanted to do everything and, and the lighting you know lack of lighting right. is just as difficult as lighting to you know collect what you want in a dark setting so well, exactly. And I guess it is, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Dario Argento and, and the films because they were, I mean, I've ripped so many things directly from those films. Um, even the sort of uh, style of it, um, the sort of black glove killer, um, which is uh, something that Dario Argento has, has used in several films. Um, so yes, uh, Suspiria, um, Tenebra, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, Deep Red, all these films where there are very direct references to uh, this filmmaker and, and his work. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's uh, going into it. I, I guess I, I wanted it to have no, no 
dialogue basically from the beginning. Um, something with my film I did uh, last year, I, I thought I struggled with was kind of telling a story mm -hmm. or really communicating, you know, precisely what I wanted. So what I wanted to focus on was being able to tell a story. And I thought by stripping away dialogue, kind of taking away uh, that aspect that then I could focus on just the visuals and trying to tell the story with just the visuals. And that would lead to uh, me being able to express this idea better. Um, so we knew the visuals were going to be a, a big part of it from the beginning. Um, and then uh, once I had that, once I had the photo, which inspired me, is basically looking at what I have uh, around me um, to use, a, gay, a, a, a very creepy basement, um, and uh, how can I basically make a story that, that fits that. Um, so yeah, the darkness, to your point, is, is a very big part of it, what you can see, what you can't. Um, the killer, of course, we, we never have his identity sort of revealed, um, and a lot of time he's spent in the shadows or in darkness. Uh, also wearing all black, so yeah, trying to shoot someone wearing, you know, all black and all black in a black basement um, is is very tricky. Uh, so uh, for scenes, I guess what I think of that, I think of the sort of dream sequence or that that sort of vision that he has about halfway through the film, where he's sort of coming out of the shadows there, and and a lot of what helped us there to, to get on the techno side was just having a lot of smoke in the basement that kind of lifts the shadows a little bit. And then uh, really it's about creating those, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, like outlines, I guess, um, that we're having his, the background lit you know, very brightly or, or with that blue light, and then he can be in the foreground in that sort of profile. Um, so you can see the outline of these fingers or outline of his, his shoulders, or you're seeing some sort of impression of him. Um, and that's something that I think worked well was to kind of light the background almost and, and almost sort of ignore uh, the the character there so that he could stand out against it and still remain this sort of dark ominous uh, uh, figure but uh, yeah a lot of thought into the visuals uh, a lot of being down in the basement testing out light bulbs seeing what's going to be bright enough to allow us to shoot pretty much with just practical lights um, testing lenses uh, testing out different colored gels you mentioned the red lights the blue lights you know trying to find the right red and blue uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun, uh, but uh, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of pre-production in this one, which I would say I did not do for my previous film. So a lot of things I wanted to try to correct or to do better or to expand upon. Um, I sort of see this as uh, uh, really an answer to uh, the first film that I had done. So, you know, very effective and very stylish. Um, all the choices were fantastic. Um, you know, uh, one of my favorite horror films of all time was the original Haunting from the early 60s, where the only special effect, if you will, is the wall breathing, but it was all about dark and shadows. So this was a, you know, other than being creepy, um, it was indeed a pleasure to watch and mesmerizing. And I felt the lack of, you know, ac you know, people talking back and forth kind of sucked me in further and made me, I felt like I was stuck you know, trapped to this guy's back, kind of looking over his shoulder, and I'm, oh, you know, at the edge of my seat enough. So, you know, really made a good film. And it, it, you know, dawned on me earlier that, you know, maybe you've, in a weird way, made a PSA that parents can show to their daughters to don't go down dark alleys and don't pick stuff up <laughs> off the sidewalk because this is what's going to happen. So you can use that. Exactly. Right, ben, thank you very much for spending part of your morning with me. And uh, thanks for submitting this, you know, just mesmerizing uh, dark tale with us. And I hope uh, audiences appreciate it as much as I did. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. And for everyone who, who takes the time to watch it, that just means uh, a whole lot to me. And hopefully they enjoy it as well. And if you do enjoy it, definitely go check out the, the other films I've mentioned uh, because they're bigger and better. And uh twice as thrilling. So check those Humble out. Well. All right, great. <laughs> Have a great day and morning, Ben. Take care. Bye.